Hey everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oil Reports. Now, I know this vlog is a couple weeks late, but today, I'd like to talk about Lady and the Tramp again. As I said in my blog from five years ago, Lady and the Tramp is not only a classic Disney film from the mid-1950s, but it's also a cult favorite to me and my parents. And to this day, I still can't believe how much Peggy Lee was involved with this movie, like voicing three characters and co-writing most of the songs. Also, while they don't technically appear as characters in the Kingdom Hearts game series, I still find it interesting that Lady and Tramp appear as statues in the 3rd District of Traverse Town. Also to note, back in February, I shared my thoughts on the 2019 live-action remake, which was one of the first films to be streamed on Disney+, Plus. and despite a few authentic changes, I think it's definitely one of the better Disney remakes out there. Even though several folks like my friend Bonnie Joy O'Connor might not think so. Speaking of which, just last weekend, I got to participate in a live stream that Bonnie was hosting where we, along with several other friends like Movie Fan, LBT Electric Dino, and Alex Gutierrez got to share our thoughts on many other movie remakes. And while it was a three hour long live stream, if you want to watch it, I'll put a link to it in the description. Anyway, for what I'll be blogging today, I'm going to share with you my thoughts on Lady and Tramp's directed video animated sequel from the early 2000s, which centers on their son Scamp. So let's get started. Released to video and DVD on February 27th, 2001, the movie is Lady and the Tramp 2 Scamp's Adventure. Now, let's get started with the plot of the film. The story finds Lady and Tramp being the proud parents of a litter of pups, which includes three well-behaved girls and one rambunctious boy puppy named Scamp, who gets fed up with rules and restrictions imposed on him by life in a family, as well as being unaware of his dad's former street dog life, and he longs for a wild and free lifestyle. In search of adventure and a real dog life, Scamp runs far away from home and meets the cute Angel, who longs for a safe and comfortable family life, along with a gang of junkyard dogs led by Buster, who takes an instant disliking to the house dog and considers Scamp a rival. Although he had found the adventure he was looking for, Scamp finds his thoughts returning to home and the loved ones he left behind. So, what do I think? Well, to me, this movie is... okay. Not one of my favorite Disney sequels, but not bad compared to... These two. But now, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now, there's not a lot of trivia to talk about other than the fact that the movie was directed by Daryl Rooney, who had also directed The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, and Mulan 2. He was an animator on The Brave Little Toaster, Once Upon a Forest, and the Back to Neverland short. He worked on the story for Aladdin, and he did the visual effects for Tron. And joining him in the director's chair is Janine Roussel, who not only produced this movie, but she also produced Aladdin and the King of Thieves, Pocahontas 2, and 2008's Tinkerbell. Plus, believe it or not, both Janine and Daryl invited Joanna Romersa, who was a Disney trainee for the production of the original film, to work on this movie as an animation timing director. Speaking of animation, in my opinion, this style of hand-drawn animation is actually pretty good. And I really love how everything is colored, from the look of 1911 Connecticut, to the human characters, to even the dog characters. Speaking of humans, I like that Jim and Darling's faces are clearly shown more often compared to how much they were hidden in the first movie, 
And I think Nick Jameson and Barbara Goodson do a pretty good job voicing them. And I think their baby, Jim Jr., is very excitable and playful, like most two-year-olds. Plus, Andrew McDonough, who later voiced Danny in Return to Neverland, does a pretty good job, too. As for the story, well, it's okay. While I do like that it takes place during the 4th of July weekend, at the same time, I feel like some parts are pretty much a carbon copy of the first movie, as well as another Disney sequel from a year earlier. But still, not too bad, though. The songs for the movie were put together by Melissa Manchester and Norman Gimbel, and to me, most of these songs are decent, with one of them being nominated for a video premiere slash DVD exclusive award for best original song. Anyway, I'd like to share my thoughts on three of the songs that are the most memorable in my opinion. First is the opening song, Welcome Home. What I like about this song is that it sets up the theme for the entire movie, independence. Also, I like that a few characters like Lady, Tramp, and their children have a solo. And I like how the sequence ends with a Broadway-style performance of various people out in the streets singing and waving. Plus, this song gets a reprise at the end of the movie while Angel has been adopted and while Scamp is being bathed. Next is the love song, I Didn't Know I Could Feel This Way, sung by Scamp and Angel. Now, this has got to be my favorite song in the entire movie, and I love how it shows the deep, close, blossoming romance between the two pups. Also, during the song, Scamp and Angel are seen walking through the park and having a spaghetti dinner at Tony's, just like Lady and Tramp did in the first film. Fun fact, Scamp and Angel's singing voices are provided by Roger Bart and Susan Egan, whom were also the singing voices of Hercules and Megara. Also to mention, I'll never forget the times when I met Susan Egan in person back in 2013 and 2018. The last song to talk about is Always There, sung by Scamp, Angel, Lady, and Tramp. This song is where, after being caught by the dog catcher, Scamp realizes the importance of family and how much he misses his home. And it also focuses on Angel's wish for a family and Lady and Tramp's grief over Scamp's decision. Now, this song, in my opinion, is very emotional. And nowadays, now that I live on my own, this song is more tear-jerking than I remember. And now, let's move on to the characters and their voice actors. Our main character, Scamp, is voiced by Scott Wolf, whom was in the 1990 Ninja Turtles movie and Snow Dogs. Now, despite the fact that he starts out as a frisky, yet stubborn and selfish puppy who hates bats and house rules, and he wants to be a wild dog, I find him to be a very understandable character, and as the film progresses, Scamp's behavior does seem to improve while spending time with Angel, and after getting thrown into the pound, Scamp finally gets a healthy respect for rules and appreciation of the family. Plus, even though I'm not the biggest fan of his voice, I find it very surprising that Scott Wolf has won a video premiere slash DVD exclusive award for best animated character voice performance. Next is his dad, Tramp, voiced by veteran voice actor Jeff Bennett. Ever since the ending of the first movie, Tramp has become accustomed to house life during his time as a pet. And during this movie, Tramp is portrayed as a firm yet concerned father but still has a few street smarts to fall back on and some good howls left in him. Also, after Scamp runs away, Tramp blames himself for him leaving home because he was too harsh with him, and he realized that he needs to understand him better. 
Also, Tramp's reason for hiding his famous reputation as a former street dog is because he was only trying to protect his son from many traps and consequences like the dog catcher. Also to note, Jeff Bennett provides the voices for Jock and Trusty, who are Lady and Tramp's neighbors and friends, and in this movie, they join the search to find Scamp after he runs away. Another character whom Jeff Bennett voices is the dog catcher, who in this film is in a style reminiscent of Don Knotts' portrayal of Barney Fife on The Andy Griffith Show. And throughout this movie, he chases after Buster and the junkyard dogs determined to capture them. Next we come to Tramp's wife, Lady, voiced by Ariel herself, Jody Benson. Now, I must mention that when I talked to Jody via GalaxyCon back in 2020, she told me that her role as Lady is one of her favorite voice roles she's ever done, next to her role as Barbie in the Toy Story sequels. As for my thoughts on Lady herself, well, despite the fact that she has a smaller role compared to the original, because she's now a mother of four puppies, most of her naivety from the first film has been replaced with a sense of responsibility. And I think Jody Benson's voice is really sweet and motherly. Also, I must say congratulations to Jody for recently receiving a doctorate degree in fine arts from Millican University, Illinois. And to me, that's a very awesome honor, and I say she's earned it. Next are Scamp's sisters, Annette, Colette, and Danielle, voiced by Debbie Derryberry and Kat Susie. Now, in my eyes, these three puppies are polite yet prissy, and they show no respect for Scamp. But at the same time, they do love him due to the fact that he's their brother. Now let's talk about the new characters, starting with Angel, voiced by Alyssa Milano, who played Phoebe in the Charmed TV series, and she voiced 26 in Dinotopia Quest for the Ruby Sunstone. In my eyes, Angel has a kind yet spunky personality, and she's got to be the nicest of the junkyard dogs. Also, she has a razor-sharp tongue, and she's very suave and skilled. Plus, because of her feelings for Scamp, I like that Angel warns him about the dangers of being a junkyard dog, and I thought her sad past was very heartbreaking, due to her having been in five previous human families, but none of them have ever stuck. And she wishes, more than anything, to be taken in and loved, which sounds pretty similar to what I want for my future. Next we come to the junkyard dog leader and the film's main antagonist, Buster, voiced by Chad Pelmentary, whom I remember from the first Stuart Little movie and Hoodwinked. I find this guy to be a smug and sadistic mutt, and I don't like that he considers Angel as his girl. Also, we learned that a while prior, Buster used to be the protege of a tramp, and he's angry that Tramp left to become a house pet with Lady. And he believes that what makes a dog a dog is living free, doing whatever they want, and not having owners. Plus, even though Buster pretends to be nice to Scamp when he tried to make him into a junkyard dog, in reality, he was only using Scamp to get revenge on Tramp. And I thought Buster's nastiest moment was when he had Scamp captured by the dog catcher and refused to save him. But thankfully, Buster gets his comeuppance when Scamp traps him underneath an enormous pile of junk. The other junkyard dogs in this movie include an old dim-witted but enthusiastic English sheepdog named Mooch voiced by Bill Fagerbake, an Afghan hound named Ruby, voiced by Kathy Moriarty, an Irish wolfhound named Sparky, voiced by the late Mickey Rooney, a Boston Terrier with a French accent named Francis, voiced by Bronson Pinshot, 
and a flea-invested mongrel named Scratchy who has no voice actor. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Lady and the Tramp 2 Scamp's Adventure is not really a great sequel, but it's not terrible either. Like I said, this isn't one of my favorite Disney sequels, but I admit, the hand-drawn animation is great, the songs are decent to listen to, the classic characters like Lady, Tramp, Jock, and Trusty are nostalgic, while some of the new ones like Angel were very promising. Plus, the villain Buster was a very selfish and envious mutt. Also, I thought the voice actors like Jeff Bennett, Jody Benson, Alessa Milano, and a few others do a pretty good job. Though I'm still not the biggest fan of Scott Wolf's voice for Scamp. Plus, there are a few scenes that brought back memories from the first movie, and while the story is a bit cliched, it still has a pretty good message regarding the value of independence. So, my rating for this movie will be a 71% out of 100. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me for my next blog, where we look at the Indiana Jones finale, Mustang Power. Music